And hello, peoples! I am, it's another day, and I am, um, I got a mess going on here. I got the board tore apart. Um, kind of found out that my original diagram doesn't apply to how this is hooked up, so I had to order a couple of extra parts. This is going to take about two days to get here. Um, this is where I'm at. I got a whole bunch of uh, trash going on in here. I'm, I found out that I can actually mount the inverter flat, which uh, I think I'm going to do that. I still need to find a place for the switch box, but I do have my my switch. So this is the switch I was telling you about the other day. So the way this works is that you have your you have three terminals in the back. You have two inputs, one for each set of batteries, one output. So what you do is, you know, this is the off position where all batteries are disconnected. Which this will actually, this was actually the original reason why I wanted one of these switches, was that uh, I wanted to turn up, be able to completely turn off the 12 volt system, and park for a long period of time or whatever reason. I want to be able to shut it off so there's no parasitic drain. Um, switch one, nice solid click. This is a this is a $45 part, so I expect it to be quality. Switch one will go to the 110s or 100s I mean over here and yes I do have a fuse block that I'm going to put in I have, few, I have three fuse blocks that I'm going to put in during the install you'll see this as I do them switch two is going to be the uh, reserve battery and switch three is one plus two which means both uh, both sets of batteries combined basically makes it one giant 12 volt battery I only use that for charging. I would never use that for discharging, um, but only for charging. And I really don't want to do that. I don't have to. But this switch um, can be mounted either either on the surface, basically like just like this, to be mounted on the surface, or it could be if you drill a big enough hole, it could be mounted um, with this part on the inside, you know, something like something like that. My hosts were kind enough to take me to the local Ace Hardware, and I was able to score uh, a hole cutter. So this requires a uh, this hole requires um, what was it three and a three and five eighths hole? It was something like that. Um, but I wound up splitting that in half because this this actually does a radius cut. A 1 and 13 sixteenths radius. So that's what you need if you get one of these switches. I cut it just slightly, slightly larger. Um, and forgive me, I'm sweating my ass off because there's no 12 volt system going on right now. And I had to shut the fan off to run power to the drill because this is not a cordless drill. So I'm, I'm getting drenched by the minute here. So I want to make this cut and get the fan turned back on and get onto this mess. So let's go ahead and do it. I do have to watch that there is a, this is going to be a, get very, very close to that. Um, there is a piece of wood. I'm not going to move the camera. You have to trust me. There's a piece of wood in the corner about a half inch or so, three quarters inch. I'm probably going to bump into it, but uh, this should still be able to cut through it, no problem. I have to be careful that I don't go too far this way because the door has to close. So this is about as best as I'm going to get it. Whoa. This needs to be tightened down a little bit. It's slipping just a bit. These really aren't the best types of hole cutters, but this was cheap. It was 16 bucks compared to like 25 bucks for the exact size I needed. So I was like, fuck it, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and get the, uh, get the, uh, bigger cut. I think I got a minute and a half before I lose the footage, so. Alright, I'm almost through. I'm probably two-thirds of the way. Let's try not to overheat this bit too much. It's already scorched at the tip. This thing's really getting hot. 
Now oh, the back of that wood is untouchable. It's so hot. But I'm almost through. I think I can see see it coming through. Yay! Finally, it, it's smoking, but it's through. I am not going to touch that for every few minutes. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot of vacuuming to do in here. That's for sure. All right. Let's hope. Let's hope that the hole is going to be the right size for what we need. Actually, I probably should have moved this out before I was cutting. Whatever. Just by a hair. Check that out. Just by a hair. Like literally, that almost feels flush. It's so close. I almost hit that other piece of wood. So it should be damn close to the door closing too. I mean, this is about, basically, I couldn't have probably made it another eighth of an inch. You know, I generally don't care too much for aesthetics when it comes to my own stuff. But if I know, you know, I know that I'm probably going to have to sell this van eventually, I want to make sure that everything I do is top-notch professional and, uh, you know, looks like that it was done by an expert, not some dude at his buddy's house with a garage. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So that's how we're going to mount it. So uh, I just had to figure out what kind of friggin' kind of friggin' bolts to use on this. It's just... Yikes. Okay, so that means I can do the wiring in here, and then when I'm done, when I'm ready to mount it, I'll just go ahead and... Uh, yeah, I should drill the holes now, since I have the drill in here. So, uh, this is getting really long. I have one thing of battery left, so let me go ahead and stop it here. If I get to anything really interesting, I'll go ahead and, and pick it back. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Ernie.